Hey everybody, welcome to this year's Summer Knowledge Grab Technology Showcase, where I walk through some of the cool services and tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I go through these with an honest review so that you can see what these are all about without necessarily having to go and talk to those salespeople unless you really want to. All right, so the lineup for this year is really exciting. This is the graph technology we're talking about today. And make sure you stick around for this month's showcase because there are a lot of other cool tools that we will be reviewing. So with that said, let's go get started. Thanks very much. Uh, hi, my name is Alex. I'm, I'm a Kiwi and I'm, I founded with a couple of friends this, this DataVish company. We actually meant to start a database and we ended up building a DataVish company, Clara. So it's a, it's a network visualization company um, and it has a lot of different use cases, one being um, what we're going to show you today, this, this personal info knowledge graph. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is something that Alex reached out to me on because if, if some of you are aware, um, I helped with the Tiger Graph Challenge where uh, I was, you know, prompting others to think about personal knowledge graphs uh, for individuals to track their information and, and have better ownership of, of their information and be citizen scientists so to speak, but we need a good visual for it. And that is something that Alex and the company that he works for is potentially going to help us with understanding a little bit better. So Alex, let's jump in. Let's see what this looks like. We went for <laughs> Elon Musk for the for the personal uh, personal knowledge graph because we thought it'd be interesting. We got an action um, shot of Elon too, which is great. <laughs> it, it is. And we obviously everything is fake data, of course, but um, yes. essentially this is the first version of it. So if people have suggestions as to how to make it better, we're all ears. And also if people, anyone wants to try and do this themselves, we'd, we'd happily work with anyone to do this. But anyway, basically, if you click on in, each of these, obviously is a data point. So, you know, your mm -hmm. facial biometric data, when you use your phone to log it to, to mm -hmm. Apple, for example, or your email addresses, uh, your app download history, all of this stuff is the kind of the most basic data you'd be showing this yep. one. There's probably a lot more. Um, but if you click on it, for example, this one, it's going to load the companies that are using that data. In this case, oh, because nice. Elon, is, Elon is an Android user, Google is the one that gets that data. Obviously, Tinder gets it as well when, they, when you upload a bunch of photos to Tinder, yep. Snapchat, same idea, and obviously Zoom. So if you click on the company, it will also load a bit about the company itself. So if you don't know what it is, in the case Very cool. that it's um, some of the companies that collect data on Google are, are weird companies you won't know the name of. And where and is your tell you the where is your tool getting that information from? So this is just general like Wikidata kind of information for Snapchat. How are you bringing that in? So actually, this the attribute stuff is just the data that Snapchat collects. So if you use Snapchat, if you if you if you're a user, it, it collects your phone number, it uses your location data mm -hmm. if you allow it to. In most cases, people do. Um, you need an email address to log in, and then obviously you're sharing your photos with it, and mm -hmm. you're using. It's taking a lot of photos. Most people use Snapchat will take a lot of photos of themselves. So mm -hmm. it's picking up that facial biometric data as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you click on any of the, sorry, if you click on Snapchat again, it will, it, what it will do is it will, it will highlight the things, the attributes that it's using. Mm -hmm. So in this case, in this case, Elon has a couple of different emails. He's used one of them to log into Snapchat. So it's the third email his, in this case, which is a Gmail. Mm -hmm. If you then click on that again, what's happened, as you can see, is that it's loaded all the companies that are using this Gmail account. So the Elon's Well, and that's account. super helpful it's for a personal knowledge Gmail graph, account. right? Like that's kind of the whole point of, of why we're trying to get into more accessible personal knowledge graphs is, oh no, now I need to change my email because somebody hacked my email, for instance. This exactly. kind of approach will now allow you to say, oh yeah, this is all, this, these are all the areas that I need to go and update that email address for because they are using that that data. And it might also help you track down who hacked it because maybe you don't have two-way authentication enabled in, in some of these. Maybe that's another data point that we could add to the personal knowledge graph to understand where those risk factors uh, present themselves. So this is, this is pretty cool. And I love how, Alex, you have all of these the icons. So are you loading those icons yourself? Is that something that's customizable? Or like, how does that kind of stuff work in the tool? So that's customizable. We can load the icons however you want. You could have these as labels as well. So if you oh, want great. to have the name here instead of the logo, mm -hmm. if you want it to be a circle instead of a square, that's all changeable. Mm -hmm. But we kept that as a square to keep them distinct from the the data points so they made sense very nice and obviously again we've got all the different uh, companies here that are using that email some of them you're not going to know rubicon was the one we didn't know this is one of the companies that tracks data via mm -hmm. um google so this is one of the trackers that's following the internet everywhere mm -hmm. and typically they have a lot of information on you in this case they don't yeah. have that much they have your emails and your search history but that's still a lot for a random company you've never yeah heard of to have data right on. 
And this is another one just like that, actually, another company that's pretty much the same thing. It's one of the companies that works with Google, but obviously the rest of them are companies you've probably heard of. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it, basically you can explore the tool uh, as long as any of, as long as you've got the, you know, the data to upload via Airtable. Um, that's how we actually upload everything via Airtable. Um, then you can basically figure out where all the connections in your data are. So we can click on credit card details, for example. This is one of his credit cards. Same idea here. Mm-hmm. We've, we've worked out very quickly that um, the, com- the companies that are highlighted are the companies that have this credit card details. So again, mm-hmm. Google probably in Google Wallet, Tinder, if you're paying for it, Amazon, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, I think, Oscar Healthcare. And then again, clicking on the company will load the data points that mm-hmm. they collected. So you can keep exploring which companies have your data. Yeah. Just clicking on, and and the it. other thing I want to highlight, when you were showing the password, it was, uh, d- you can use dummy data or you just say that this data is privatized. It's anonymous. Yeah. Um, so that you can track where that password or that email or whatever, you know, credit card number is uh, where it's being used, but not what the actual value is, because that would exactly. be exposing yourself to more threats, it's, which you don't Exactly, want to yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, so in this case, it's a, it's, it's a bunch of Xs, you know, you can yeah. use whatever data you want here. It's the point is not to expose more of your own data. It's exactly, it exactly. It is, so. You don't Same want Airtable to have details. all that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same here with the bank details in this case. But yeah, all, all of the data is is if it if it's a if it's a specific kind of data, it's anonymized. So, or you can anonymize it yourself. So same with domain yep. names owned. In this case, we know that uh, he'll own a few domain names. He owned X.com, and the only companies that know that are actually Google and GoDaddy. In this case, you can see that here. Mm-hmm. So you can keep exploring it. Obviously, the more data out there, the more terrifying this graph becomes, but obviously the yeah. more useful it becomes as well. Yeah. So actually this is all available here. So you can also, anyone can go to this URL and play around with it. Oh, very fun. All right. Personal, so personal knowledge graph might work. we'll uh, put the link down below. Um, so you just directly uh, click on it if anybody wants to go and, and explore this. So, so Alex, walk me through a little bit, like how do you make this a reality? If somebody wanted to start to experiment with this, of course they can go here and see what a knowledge graph that is uh, very central to a person would look like. I think that's step one, but step two would be, okay, well, how can, how can I make my own personal knowledge graph? Can you walk us through how you created this? Yeah. So, I mean, if you wanted to do it yourself, obviously this data is all anonymized. So it was a bit, bit easier than doing it yourself, but if you want to do it yourself and you are in Europe, it's, it's, it's even easier because there's GDPR. So you can yep. actually request all your data from companies. You can go mm-hmm. to Google, you can go to Facebook and LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a archive download so you can actually download all your contacts for example which is mm-hmm. another way to build a slightly different version of this graph but you can basically request your data from a lot of companies in the states the legislation is not quite as strong but you can still request data from companies facebook still will give you some of your data if you ask mm-hmm. for it google did the same um, essentially then you start putting this data into a into an air table we use air table to up to update everything mm-hmm. and this is an example of the air table so basically you start collecting it you can import it from an excel sheet or a csv or kind of any file that you get from most of the time that they'll send you csvs these companies mm-hmm. you can start uploading it this way um, but obviously the other way to do it is it's kind of the manual way the way that we did it here which is write down the the most important data points obviously mm-hmm. things like bank account credit mm-hmm. card social security number yeah um, if you have stocks you should you know what stocks you own um, yeah. if you own domains that's another one and then obviously your email and your search history you can write all that yeah. down and you can just start thinking about like what services you're using for example yeah and so, the thing about yeah. a personal knowledge graph and and I think this is why you know normally when you're talking knowledge graph it's such big data typically uh, that uh, I always avoid talking about manual, like, oh no, you're doing that manually. Ooh, hold on a second. But with this, it's your personal knowledge graph. So you get to dictate what data you feel is the most important for you to track. And if you do it by hand, sometimes like think about when you are writing down, you know, like maybe your bank card expires and you need to now change it. You're, you sit down and you write down where are all the places that are using that card and that information that you have to update. This is no different. It's just making it now exactly. automated um, after you've put it in and you can track it a lot easier. Exactly. Yeah. So you can, uh, that's, that's probably one of the best use cases as well, using like your credit card details mm-hmm. and you're thinking, okay, I've got my insurance payments. I've got my, mm-hmm. uh, my Amazon account, my um, Netflix, my, yeah. my gym membership. But you can also, I, I, what I limited this to was corporates, but you can also do this with government information too. So if you have, um, 
information that you know different government agencies are tracking and you wanted to keep track of that as well yeah. this is another way to do yeah. that of course we kept that out because it's more about corporate corporates yeah. collecting data yeah. but you could do the same thing with your health data you can understand like exactly. okay i have uh, i have five different um you know physicians i'm working with or i work with a cardiologist and a yep. gp and etc so this you can also build that around the people that you share your data with so so alex one thing i do want to ask is you know, this is showing some of the modeling and, and data um, upload. How do you, is there any kind of querying on top of this? Or, you know, how would you interact with this other than visually? Or is it just visual? So we have a search function up here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you did put in your, uh, some part of your, your, some identification, I think. But the other thing that we have is the data type um, mm -hmm. filter here. So you could basically name these. Uh, whatever you wanted. In this case, we've named them generically, but if you had an address and you wanted to call it something that wasn't identifiable, but that, mm -hmm. that meant something to you, like lake address, mm -hmm. um, street address, et cetera, then you can filter it. So you can mm -hmm. look at, okay, I just want to see everything that's at this address and it will load just that node. And then nice. you're just loading companies connected to that node as well. Uh, but yeah, if you click on, if, if you've loaded a data type and you wanted to understand, okay, Zillow has my my second address. If you click it again, then you'll also, you'll also load all the things the other data that Zillow has, in this mm -hmm. case, just your address of information. Um, but yeah, filters are the way to do it at the moment. Um, we can Very create cool. a couple of different kinds of filters to it. So if you have different data types and you, you want to make different filters, um, mm -hmm. we can do that. So we've, we've, we've kept it basic because we didn't collect a lot of description data and we didn't collect a lot of other data, but yeah. we can make lots of different filters through other filters through data. So if somebody wanted to get started using Clara for some of these things, how would they go about doing that? At the moment, we don't have an interface to build all this. So basically the best thing would to be to build um, your the Airtable, like I showed here, like this. Mm -hmm. And once you've got the data connected, collected, uh, fire off an email. Um, basically you can do that from the landing page directly. So if you email me, I'll, I'll work with you to make it happen. Basically we're still, still haven't uh, built the interface to be able to make your own graphs. But basically if you fire off an email here, hi, Hi at clarifines.com, <laughs> just this get access button here, then I will, I'll make sure it happens. So Alex, tell me a little bit about Claros. If, if people haven't heard of you before, obviously you are, you know, have that luxury of, and maybe, maybe it makes your life harder. So it's not a luxury for you, but it's a luxury for people that want to get involved and, and see what Clara is all about. You know, tell me a little bit about Clara. Like, where did your journey start? Where are you at in that journey? And how did Graph become a part of that journey? So at start, we, we kind of ended up here accidentally, actually. We ended up um, building a, a data product that uh, the Graph layer was kind of uh, a feature of, essentially. And a couple of clients wanted us to build graphs for different, it looks similar to this, but it's for, for mapping company data mm -hmm. and map, mapping companies in different sectors. So mm -hmm. it, it looks it looks similar, but you're not looking at, at you know at attributes or personal data, you're looking at companies. Mm -hmm. And from there, we, we kept getting requests to build slightly different versions of that. We built project management tools that also use the visual layer, use the graph layer. And um, yeah, we, we through COVID, we, we pivoted basically to being a, a graph company. We moved away from the data side because this is where, where the most interest was. And we, we raised a bit of money initially and now we're, you know, we're, we're funded completely from, from our, uh, our corporate customers. Uh, at the stage, we're looking for new use cases. So it'd be nice to be able to expand eventually to be a tool on top of Airtable, something that you, know, you, can, you can use Airtable or you can use another spreadsheet tool to build um, spreadsheets, connected spreadsheets, whether they be personal knowledge graphs or anything else. And then mm -hmm. basically just click a button and it will upload it and you have a visualization that you've built for yourself. 